Sister Jones. Good morning. Waiting on Pastor. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good, Good, morning. Morning. Good morning to each and every one of you, and thank you for joining us today here at Wayman Chapel AME Church School. Reverend Allen D. Edwards is our pastor, and I'm Sister Judy Jones, <clears throat> excuse me, Sunday School Superintendent. We thank you for joining us this morning. Let us begin with our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence it shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the union of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you, Lord, and to recognize who you are, O oh God, for you are truly the Lord God Almighty. Lord God, we don't have enough tongues to keep wagging to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you through the good, through the bad. Thank you for being with us through the ice storms. Bless those who are still going through and uh, pressuring on through the storms as they go out eastward. Lord God, only you, God, can send ice, snow, fire, rain, tornadoes, all at the same time, God. But people still don't believe that there is a God. But God, you showed out this week. Father God, we just want to say we recognize that. We recognize it and we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory, oh God, for you are worthy, you are worthy to be praised. Now, Father God, be with us and bless us and keep us as we go through. Lord, be our help in all that we need, Father God. Bless the sick, the shut-in, and those who are afflicted, Father God. Touch those who need a healing hand, oh God, for we know that you have it, Father God. Father God, open their eyes to see those that don't know you in the pardon of their own sins, Lord. Have mercy, have mercy upon us, oh God. Father God, be with us and watch over us and guide us. Bless the one who's going to bring the messages today. Lower him down into your bosom and allow your Holy Spirit to give what thus saith the Lord. Father God, we need thee. Please be with us, walk with us. Father, but we still have dangerous days ahead. But Father, if we just keep our hands in your hands, everything will be all right. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Bless us all and just keep us, oh Lord. And let us not forget the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, I'll be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not yes. to temptation, but deliver us from me. Deliver us from me. Amen. 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 Today's lesson. Let's just start off with a song this morning. God's getting us ready for that great day. Oh, God's getting us ready for that. Great day, hallelujah. God's getting us ready for that great day. Oh, who shall be a father? I shall be ready for that great day. Oh, God, my mother ready for that great day. Hallelujah. Got my mother ready for that great day. Oh, who shall be a for that great day? Oh, ready 
Lesson 10, February the 6th, 2022. We start a new month off, a new quarter, and also recognizing that it is Black History Month, in which Black History Months should not stop. They should go on 12 months of the year. Lesson 10, title for today, Nathan Condemns David. Lesson scripture comes from 2 Samuel 12, Focus scripture, 2 Samuel 12, 1 through 9, 13 through 15. Amen. Begin. Oh, excuse me. Let us read the key verse together. Nathan said to David, you are the man, 2 Samuel 12 and 7. Commencing. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds. But the poor man had nothing, save one little owl lamb, which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of its own meat and drank of its own cup and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And he, there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lambs and dressed it for the man that he was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that had done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house, and thy master's wives unto thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if it had not been too little, I would more have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despise the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. And David, and David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also had put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. How be it because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. All. And Nathan departed Nathan unto, his unto, his unto his house. And, and the, the Lord, Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare with David. Amen. And it was and very, it was very Amen. May the Lord have a blessing on the reading of the word. Reverend, it's in your hands. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. All good the time. Good morning. Good morning. We thank him for one more day that he have allowed us to assemble together, uh, whether by computer or whether in person. Uh, only God could do these things. Amen. As uh, Sister Jones has introduced our lesson and read, we read the scripture, uh, we find that it's still basically talking about justice. 
Hey man, all these lessons so far, the first, uh, uh, first nine have been pertaining to justice. Hey Amen. How God is, uh, he's fair, he's just, uh, and he's loving. Uh, so we can't assume that his love will uh, allow anybody to get by with anything because of the justice that he uh, is within him. He makes sure that uh, all persons are treated fairly. And look at this lesson today, how that uh, the justice that he is uh, showing, uh, he's going to bring the past. Uh, it starts with, um, again, with uh, David. Amen. And David was considered as one of what a man of God's own heart. But yet and still, God said, what? Well, you got to be, you're going to be justice. And it also shows at the end of it, when we get to the last uh, basic uh, verse there, verse 15, we'll see how that uh, the sins of David had an effect on his child. Right. Amen. Which means that what we may not think what we do will affect anybody else, but it affects the people around us. And also it may affect the generations to come after us. Amen. So we have to be mindful of the things that we do uh, because of the effect it may have on, on somebody else. All right. Uh, so uh, when we look at the lesson today, uh, just a few highlights in the Sunday School book uh, before we start going through the verses. Uh, in the middle of page 59, it talks about today's lesson makes clear that sin has consequences. Amen. <laughs> Everything we do has consequences. Uh, if we do good, we're going to have good consequences. If we do bad, we're going to have bad consequences. Amen. But what the choice is basically upon us as to which we choose to do. But we have to realize that whatever we do, uh, it's going to have an effect upon us. Amen. Uh, God knows everything a person thinks. He hears every word a person says. And we know that he what? He sees everything a person does. Amen. And so he's just that kind of God. So there's nothing uh, that we do or anybody does, no matter where we are, where we go, that uh, God don't know about it. Amen. Um, after uh, engaging in a sinful act that God found uh, despicable, David did not repent. Instead, David attempted to hide uh, his sin. Amen. He attempted to hide his sin. Why? Because remember he sent you ride out to the front lines to get him killed, and man, and what? And he so he felt that he was trying to uh, get by with what he had done, uh, but what it didn't work, uh, you know. And then it led to what? It led to uh, uh, other consequences that had to come because David was uh, trying to uh, cover up uh, the wrongness that he had done. All right, uh, but we find that God knew what he had done. And God sent uh, Nathan, his prophet, to what? To tell David basically what he had done, to let David know that God still knew uh, what he had done, regardless of what David was trying to do to cover it up. Amen. Uh, David could have ordered Nathan's death. Instead, David listened. Now, uh, God used Nathan to go to David, which was a prophet. He used him to go to David and to uh, tell David about the sin he had committed. But you see how David, uh, how Nathan approached David, he what? He told him a story. <laughs> he told him a story about, uh, about you know, a man that having a, a lamb and having only one lamb. And somebody came to David, a guy came to David and what wanted something because during that day, uh, it was uh, customary for uh, people to help each other and to support each other. And so uh, this man came to David and wanted, uh, wanted uh, a lamb, wanted food. And what he said, so he went, instead of giving him one that David had, he went and stole somebody else's lamb, the only lamb that he had, which means what? He was inconsiderate of the other person, the other man that only had one. And so he felt that as long as he gives something, uh, then what? Then he would be okay. Uh, but uh, Nathan was using that story uh, to what? To identify to David that's just how uh, he did to uh, how he did uh, what uh, with uh, Bathsheba's husband uh, and what and took his wife for himself. Okay, uh, so we have to be mindful again of the things that we do because uh, again it affects a whole lot of people. 
and God sees just what we do, regardless as to uh, where we are, uh, who we think we're hiding from. All right. When we look at the verses, first of all, it talks about verses one, two, and three. It talks about, uh, again, uh, fortunes or the things that has. It talks about uh, two men. Uh, and the first part of verse one says, and the Lord sent Nathan unto David. Now, look at now, the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And God already knew what Nathan was going to tell David. Amen. Because he wanted David to, uh, to reveal to David uh, the sin that he had committed. And so God sent Nathan with a message to David. And so Nathan now prepared the message that he was going to uh, give to David by what? By putting it in the form of a, of a story. Uh, during that time, it was like a parable. Uh, the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Why? Because he sinned. Amen. He sinned. Uh, not only uh, he sinned, but what? He, he uh, uh, affected somebody else by the sin that he did. Um, so when we look at the second part of the next part of verse number two, it talks about, and he came unto him. Talking about who? Nathan. And once God sent Nathan unto David, Nathan came unto him and said unto him, there were two men. Now, look how you put it. He said, two men. Who are the two men he was referring to? He was referring to, uh, again, um, huh? Yeah, well, he was referring, he, he used the rich man and the poor man, but he was basically talking about who? Talking about David and Uriah. Amen. Why? Because those were the two men that, uh, that was involved in the sin that God was displeased with what, da what David did. And it said, these, uh, there were two men in one city, the one rich and the other one poor. Okay. So um, who's the rich man? David. <laughs> and the poor man was what? Was Uriah. Amen. And so we find it that what? That um, uh, this is the description that uh, Nathan was using uh, of the two men to identify uh, David and Uriah. All right. Uh, Verse number two and verse four to three is that the rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing. So he's, uh, he's re referred to now as the rich man had many flocks with David. And David had a lot of things, a lot of animals, all that stuff, and what he did. And, and then the poor man had, no, had nothing. He only had uh, nothing, really, would indicate that what, that David had more than what, uh, what Uriah did. Amen. But yet, still, when it came uh, uh, to what David did, David felt that it would be easier for him not to give up what he had, but what? But, but he took somebody else's and had, and that, that's what God was displeased with. And uh, the second part of verse 5 it says, Say one new lamb. That's what? That's the one that uh, the poor man had. Amen. The poor man had what? Had, had one lamb. And in that, uh, that one lamb that the poor man called, what? It was signifying Uriah and Bathsheba. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And say, what? Bathsheba, he only had one, one wife. But then David had many wives. Amen. And so instead of uh, being satisfied with the number he had, he still wanted what? Uh, Uriah's wife. And so therefore, what? Uh, this is where Nathan was uh, identifying that uh, you know this wasn't right because he he had more uh, than what a poor man did, but yet and still he took the only thing that the poor man had. Okay, and it said what it said with the with the rich man the poor man had that one lamb he had what he had bought he had nursed it up it grew up together with him and with his children. So what this this. This poor man, or uh, Uriah, what had had uh, Bathsheba was there with it, what his family, amen. And so it's saying that what it's saying he had what he had uh, provided for him, for her, and stuff like that. And here David comes and what going to take only one that Uriah had take him away and take her away and what. And he had others that he what he he uh, he had that he had no need for going take Uriah's wife, okay. And so it says what? It says, uh, it did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. Amen. So all this was, Uriah was describing uh, to David uh, 
what he had done. Huh? Yeah, had described to uh, uh, Nathan had described to David what he had done, and in doing so, what uh, it it it, it uh, was now preparing David to be able to realize uh, that it was him all the time that Nathan was talking about. Okay. And verse number four is talking about what? The injustices. Now, this is where uh, we've been talking about justice and uh, fairness and all of that, what, all these times. And so now uh, it begins after Nathan has set him up. Now he has set him up by telling him what? About a rich man and a poor man, which all the time it was, it was referring to who? It was referring to uh, David and Uriah. And so here it says what? It says that uh, the injustice that came about here he talks about verse number four. And there came a traveler unto the rich man. Amen. Remember we talked about the rich man? He talked about before the rich man and the poor man. And so now he says what? A traveler came unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herds to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was uh, come to him. Amen. Uh, and so what? This is the injustice there. That what? He had enough to provide for the traveler, but yet it's still what? He did not use his own. He went and what? He went and took uh, the poor man that only had one. He went and took him. Amen. Uh, now that's pretty, that's pretty cold, isn't it? <laughs> that's pretty cold. Amen. Now got it, and you don't, and, you, and what? You don't want to use yours, but you're going you gonna to think you're doing a good, uh, call yourself doing good. Because you're gonna take somebody else's and what, and that way they will look at him as saying, "Well, yeah, you did provide." Because that was the custom during that time. Right? You remember when God was talking about taking care of the stranger? Amen. That was a what? That was a community thing. When somebody comes into your into your community and what they had a need, then what? Then the community was supposed to what? Take care of them and provide for them. And so here, this is what David called himself doing. You know, it, it looked like it was good, but what? Yet and still it was wrong because God saw that what? It wasn't his, he gave away. He took it because of the position he was in and he had the authority to do whatever he wanted to do. Amen. But what? That still is not justice and right in the sight of God, uh, you know, for what? For to take something somebody else has, that's the sin right there. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's yeah. And so... And so here, what David thought he was doing good, but yet still what he was, uh, he was still against the will and the word and the, and the laws of God. And so in verse number five, verses five and six, it talks about uh, angry, angry. Look what it says. It says Dave, ang David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. Huh? Amen. Now this is what David is getting mad now with uh, with the man that Nathan was talking about that took the poor man's lamb <laughs> and it did something. Now this thing, now he did the same thing. Now he hadn't realized yet what Nathan was talking about. Yeah, man, so now he what? He wanted to show that, well, he he feels that well, this is wrong. The man was wrong for doing that. Yeah, man, I said, Nathan set him up pretty good, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He set him up pretty good. Now, now here what, David is getting angry uh, because of what Nathan had told him that the rich man did to the poor man, amen. And so now he finds that what? As the Lord liveth, uh, David said, the man that had done this thing shall surely die. Yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You see how easy it is for sometimes for us to look at what somebody else did and talk about what they should get, uh, what punishment they should get, but yet still we, ref we refuse to look at what we've done and feel that what? Justice should be done to us also. Amen. And so uh, the difference in status and resources between the two men combined with the rich man's thoughtless action uh, made the guilt of the rich man uh, clear. Amen. So therefore, David's uh, instinct as judge was to pass the death sentence on the man for the what? For his behavior. Now, just see how it's going to turn out when Nathan says, you the man. <laughs> hey man, now what are, what are you gonna what are you gonna think then? Well, hey, you did the same thing that rich man that uh, rich man did, right? Hey Amen. In verse number six, it says, "And he shall restore the lamb fourfold." 
Amen. Now, this is what David is saying, that what? That uh, the man that stole the poor man's lamb, what? Because it was wrong and he should die, he's saying now, he want to I want to tell Nathan what should happen to the rich man. What do you say? He said, he said what? He said, die, and then he said what? Restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Yep. Amen. Now, he's, he's only describing himself. <laughs> yeah. Only describing himself. Uh, so yep. when we look at it, now we talk about, again, uh, now this is what, they, what Nathan and I is beginning to tell David. That what? That, uh, well, you know, all that you said should be done to this uh, rich man, that was because of what he did to this poor man, David, uh, Nathan comes in now in verse number seven and said, well, you the man. <laughs> huh? He said, he said, and Nathan, in verse 40, verse 7, and Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Yeah. Can you imagine what kind of expression David had yeah. to say? <laughs> once, once Nathan told him, say, all that that you were saying about should happen to this man, all that should happen to you. Because why? Yeah. You the yeah. one, as a rich man, took Uriah's only wife, and what? And he was the poor man. So now what? Now you should be what? These things should be happening to you. And so we can imagine and assume how David felt now that Uriah said, well, you are the man. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Amen. That you are the man. Uh, yeah. The second part of verse number seven, it says what? Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel. Now this is what uh, Nathan is telling uh, David. And God said, right, after he's already told him that you're the man, <laughs> I look what God said. Look what God told Nathan and inspired Nathan to tell to David. He said, I anointed the king over Israel. Huh? Now, this is what uh, God is using uh, Nathan to, to tell David how God had blessed him. But yet, see that David turned around, what? And did something wrong against Uriah, hmm? against another person. Yeah. God, what I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. Now these are the blessings that what that God is letting David know that what that this is what I did for you, and now look what you're gonna do, huh? You're gonna go and what do something totally against what uh what my character is or God's character is, and against what God's uh, person or leader is uh, is what is not of Amen. By what by by misusing and abusing. Are stealing, uh, having injustices against somebody that is what less fortunate than what you are. Yeah, yeah. Nathan reminded David of the favor that the Lord has shown him. Amen. Now that's a lesson for all of us when we acknowledge and realize how good God has been to us. Amen. And what? Then that should encourage us or give us a desire to what? to be good unto somebody else. Remember a few lessons ago, we talked about when uh, he was talking about talking to Israel, God was uh, informing Israel, saying, you know, you used to be slaves in Egypt. He said, what? He said, but I brought you out. He said, now you came out. Uh, I brought you out of Egypt from being in slavery and bondage, so what? So don't you put nobody else in slavery. Huh? Why? Because they re he was reminding them that you remember you haven't always been where you were either, right? And this is what Nathan is reminding uh, David that God is saying: you have not always been rich, huh? <laughs> Amen. Amen. But what? But because of the grace of God and the blessing that God has done, now what? Now you in a position now what to have a lot. So don't misuse and abuse or take advantage of somebody that don't have what you have. <laughs> What do you say? Lord, give it. Lord, take it away. Huh? Yeah. Just like he gave it to us. If we misuse it and be abusing somebody else, he might take it from somebody else, then he may cut, might well cut the middle man out. Huh? <laughs> what? Give it to the poor man as he started out with. Amen. And so, and so this is what, uh, what uh, God was reminding David that what? That he had been blessing him. And for David to do something like he did against Uriah uh, taking his wife, then what? Then God was very displeased with that. Okay? And look what he said in verse number eight. And I gave thee thy master's house. Now, these are all the blessings that God is continuing to tell what? That use Nathan to tell 
David, that what? This is what God has done for him. I gave thee your master's house and thy master's wives unto thy bosom. Look, we say wives now. That means what? David had more wives. Huh? <laughs> Amen. Then what? Then what? The one that Uriah had. Amen. And gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such things, such and such things. Mm -hmm. Amen. So God is letting him know that what? He's been good to David. Uh, and say what? Even with the number of blessings that he had provided and where he had brought David from, from being a shepherd boy, now into the position he's in, he said, what? If that had not been enough, what? If you've still been faithful to God, then what? God will still continue to, to bless you. Right? Amen. Um, so when we look at it, uh, verse number nine, it talks about what uh, David as being now what ungrateful because why because all that God had identified uh, through Nathan to tell David this is what I've done for you in verses seven and eight now what he's saying uh, uh, what now David is still ungrateful because why because he still did something wrong mm -hmm. amen uh, verse nine says wherefore has thou despised the commandments of the Lord to do evil in his sight Mm -hmm. Amen. Which means what? Uh, many times we take God's blessings for granted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as human beings, many times we find that we never have enough. Mm -hmm. huh? The more God gives us, the more we always want. Mm -hmm. huh? Always <laughs> looking to God, well, why you didn't give me this? Amen. But what God has given us, he promises, and he's true to his word that what he'll give us all that we need. But the problem comes in what? When God has provided our need and we still want some more. <laughs> it's just greed. Just greed. Just yeah, greed. That's greed. That's greed. And then think about it. Well, the, when you already got what you need and then you want more, then what? Then that brings up the thoughts and the schemes about how you're going to get what you want. Hmm? Which means what? Then you're going to think about getting it any kind of way you can. Huh? Like, like, like David. David didn't need Bathsheba. Huh? But what? But because he looked at her and what? He wanted her. Huh? God has God had already said in verses 7 and 8 that what? He had provided David with everything he needed. Huh? But yeah, just because he saw something else he wanted that God didn't provide, what? He took it on his own to what? To go ahead on and get it. How many of us are guilty of that? Huh? <laughs> huh? Well, I want it regardless, so I'm going to do what I need to do in order to get it. Which means what? You're going to lie? You're going to cheat. And what it says is if you lie, you're going to steal. <laughs> so what? So some kind of way, what? Because your desires or your personal uh, desires is greater than what? Than what it should be. Because now you what? You're going to do whatever you need to do in order to get what you need. And that's what he did. And man, what? He started, David started lying. He started cheating and what? And he stole for what? For, from Uriah something that wasn't his. Because that's what he wanted. Amen. And not only led to what? Led to stealing, which is what? Which is a sin. He led to what? To being a murderer, which was a sin. Amen. And so why? All because he wanted something that wasn't his and he didn't have. All right. All right. So uh, the first part of verse nine, what he told, he said, thou hast desired the commandment, uh, despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight. Uh, what? God said what? Now you have you have what? You have done wrong, disobeyed my commandments in order to what? In order to do the evil that you wanted to do, right? And look what then, then in the second part of verse 9 says, Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. Hmm? Amen. Why? He's trying to cover up what he did. Huh? And has taken his wife to be thy wife and has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Hmm. So, because of his fleshly desire, remember the scripture says what that he was uh, he was on the roof, she was on the roof, and he saw her, and she looked good to him. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so he couldn't get by that, and we said he had to take her, regardless whether he was somebody else's wife, she was somebody else's wife or not. What he took her, Amen. Um, and so it started him to what to have a chain of reaction that would lead him. To what? To have sinned against God. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Um, and so we, we skip down to now the verses 13 uh, uh, through 15. It says, um, in 13 words, it says, uh, the confession. Amen. All that, we can assume that between verses, uh, between verses uh, 9, well, 10 and uh, 10 and 12, it talks about what, how that, uh, again, he what, he, he went through and he had these things done to, uh, done to Uriah. And after, after Nathan had now informed David that what, he had sinned against God and committed these crimes, now he comes and what, he realizes now that the, the rich man and the poor man that Uriah was telling him about was what, was actually David himself and Uriah. And so now that what now he have been uh, he have been made aware of his sin. When we God revealed to us our sin, what's the first thing we should do? Huh? Yeah, we should repent, right? Amen. <laughs> Why? Because God already knows what we do. So what if we want to do the right thing? What the first thing we do is what repent for the sins that we have committed. Mm -hmm. Amen. So in the, yeah. Verses 12 through, I mean, verses uh, 10 through 12 was basically what? Where uh, David would realize what he had done to Uriah. And now he realizes what he done was sinful and what God was displeased with it. And this is where it, it makes it more evident that David was what? A man of God's own heart. Because once he acknowledged his sin, he what? He repented. Hmm? And that's what we find in, in verse number 13. It says what? It said that David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why do you think he didn't say he has sinned against Uriah? That's who that's who wife he took. <laughs> what you think? Why he didn't say I sinned against Uriah? <laughs> Because you know he knew what he did. What what God had already in his commandment told him no, that's what you should you should not do, huh? Amen. And so he acknowledged that the wrongness that he did was what first of all was against God because it was against God which led to what it being against Uriah and whomever we sin against. What first we sinned against God because we did what God told us not to do. Hmm? Amen. If we do what God tell us to do, then what we would not sin against somebody else. <laughs> so David acknowledged that what he did was wrong, but what? The most of all, he was a sorry for what? For sinning against God, doing what God uh, had told him not to do, and what? God was displeased with his actions that he did. Hmm? Amen. Uh, and so uh, based, upon, based upon David's confession where he said, I have sinned against the Lord, what did that lead David to do? It's not in the Lord. What did, what did it lead David to do? Repent. To break. Broke, huh? break down. Broke down. Yeah, he, he, what? he repented. Huh? Yeah. And then what he did? He went and that's when he wrote the what? 51st Psalms? Yeah, 51.3. That's right. Mm -hmm. Psalm 51. Somebody got your Bible with it? Yeah, 51.3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get the, who, got, who got Psalm 51? Read, read, the, read the first couple verses of Psalm 51 and see what. Now, this is what? This is where right after David said unto Nathan, what? I have sinned against God. Huh? And what did he do? So he realized what he was wrong. Yeah. And to yeah. and to acknowledge his sinfulness, he repented. And then what he it was it was on his heart so much. What did he do? He put all this in, in Psalm fifty one, huh? where yeah. he said what? Have mercy for me, O God, according to Thy loving kindness, according unto Thy multitude of Thy tender mercies, <coughs> blood. But uh, but not my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly <clears throat> from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my sin. My I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before thee. And then he says, against thee and the only God have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Uh, so what? So so that was what? That was really coming from the heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, he realized that what? That God was upset with him, angry with him because of what he did. Uh, and so what? And so uh, he told Nathan that what? I have sinned against God. 
And then what he did, then he began to uh, to pull out his his uh his his heart to God and ask him to have mercy upon him. And that also shows now that what after David acknowledged his sin and what and uh, uh asked God to have mercy upon him and to forgive him for his sin, uh that just goes to show you what. Uh if when if and when we sin, uh if and when when we sin, if we what repent. And ask God for forgiveness and have mercy upon what? It shows that what? God is a forgiving God. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even mm -hmm. he's a forgiving God. All right. Um, the second part of verse 13 is saying, And Nathan said unto David, The Lord had also put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Because remember David told Nathan, say, Yeah, the, the, the rich man that took, that took the one lamb, he what? He should die. And then what? Repay the poor man, what? Full, full for what he had done. Amen. And so now, after David what acknowledged his sin in the first part of verse thirteen, David uh, Nathan said, "What the Lord had put away <laughs> thy sin, thou shalt not die." Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let us know that what God is a forgiving God. Now the hardest problem is, you know, us forgiving ourselves. Actually, you know, believing that God has forgiven us for our sins. Mm -hmm. You know, to say what we will forget. I mean, we will forgive, but we never forget. So many times yeah. that works on our own part too, where we ask God for forgiveness. But do we really believe God forgave us? If you're not really believing that, then what? You're going to carry that around and say, well, I know I did wrong, and God still remembers the sin that I committed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we have to believe that what? If we written, now, if you really, if you, if you don't mean it, and you just go through the motions and say, Lord, forgive me, and you go, go back and do the same thing again, then what? That means you ain't never forget. You really, you never really changed, huh? But if you really sincere and believe that you asked God for forgiveness and God forgave you, then what? Then you know God forgave you. you know, you're gonna be able to live with that. That what? Well, I did wrong, but God has forgiven me and given me another chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Believe, do you think? Do you think if uh, if Judas would have went to uh, would have went to the Jesus? And ask Jesus to forgive him instead of going and trying to turn the money back in to the people that gave it to him. Do you think he was he would have hung himself? Just a thought, huh? Well, <clears throat> why? Because depends he on what. what he did. And so what? So all he had all, so me, it seemed like all he had to do was what? Go back and say, Lord, I, I sinned against thee. Huh? And, man, and what? Jesus would have probably comforted him and encouraged him that what? That that's all right. You know, it wasn't it wasn't you that was doing it. It was the spirit that was in you that caused you to do that. Huh? Amen. And so here we find that David what? David uh, now was encouraged by Nathan that what? God has put mm -hmm. away your sins and you shall not die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Um, all right. Verses 14, 15 talks about the consequences of what? Of the sin that David did. Even yeah. though what? Even though David asked for forgiveness and what? And Nathan said, God has forgiven you huh? and you're not going to die. But look what effect it had on his offspring. Verses 14 and 15, it said, 14 said, how be it? Because thy, by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. Which means what? David had been bragging, had been boasting about the God that he served. And now what? Now everybody know, even the enemy know what? That David sinned against God. Yeah. And, what? Yeah. and he took uh, Bathsheba, Uriah's wife. Hmm? Which, but with, uh, with even the sinner knew that was wrong. <laughs> Amen. So what you think? Now that would have, that what? It said what? It said that what? They gave the enemy uh, occasion to what? To blaspheme against the Lord. I mean, what? They, mm -hmm. Now I was talking about, well, if David was your was yours and a man of your own heart and look what he did he sinned against you so he disobeyed you yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah amen and that's what satan tried to try that's why satan is so on on the field of, of christians those who profess to be christian because why yeah. because if we get you to do something or uh, get us to do something that we that it know is a sin against god then what he gonna say he's like, lord well how how is it that uh your people Professing to be your children, uh, 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 you know, are Christians. Why are they doing what they're doing? They're doing what I, what I want them to do, not what you want them to do. 
<laughs> and so what? So therefore, it gives the enemy opportunity to what? To uh, to talk about God or to criticize God because those professing to be Christians are doing more what the devil wants them to do than what God wants them to do. Hmm? Amen. And so it says what? It says, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Hmm? <laughs> Amen. The child that is born unto thee. Now the child is going to die. Huh? You remember David said that the rich man should die? Mm. Amen. Amen. But then Nathan came back after he asked for forgiveness. Nathan said, what? Well, you're not going to die. But now what? His child going to die. Amen. So what? What he did uh, affected uh, he had consequences not only with him, but also what well, even more so with this child that what that was born by Bathsheba hmm. because of the sin that David did. Huh? Okay, all right, and and uh, verse 15 it says, And Nathan departed unto his house, he had he had completed yeah. what God was on him to do, yeah, and that, mm -hmm. was, that mm -hmm. is appealed to David. Yeah, yeah. God was displeased with the sin that he had committed. And yeah. to let David know, uh, Nathan had a message to give to David from God that God saw what he did. Huh? Amen. Yeah. And therefore, what? Uh, he presented it to David, and David acknowledged that what? That he had sinned against God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so he said, What? He said, Nathan returned back to his house. And as the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare to David, and it was very, very sick. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. David would watch and he would pray as the child sickened and eventually died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many times do you think David might have thought about if he had not met with Bathsheba? <laughs> Amen. It made her pregnant. That this would have never happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Many a times. Many a times. That comes with doing wrong. Huh? Yeah. Somewhere mm -hmm. in life, we are gonna see the results of what we've done wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna it's gonna hunt us in a way that what that we are wish that we never would have done what we did. Just think about yeah. a, a person that go out and. And kill somebody. Yeah. I, believe, mm -hmm. I believe that, you know, even if they get away with it, I believe that they still be bothered by it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Even if they send them to prison, I think they still be bothered by it. Because if I would have not done this, then what? Yeah. I would have been in a situation right now, or this would not have happened. How many of you know, here's something more we're we listening to all of us. How many times that the police stop you? Excuse me. Stop you from doing something wrong in driving, and you say, <laughs> and you say, now if I wouldn't have done this, huh, I wouldn't have to pay this ticket. <laughs> hmm. yeah. so you know, got this yeah. with us, right? To what? To come back and let us know that what? If we would have did the right thing, many people say, if I followed my first mind. <laughs> and again, you know, you, you know there's people all good, all good, they wouldn't speed you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I'd have followed my first mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think they were saying about the first mind? What's the first mind? Huh? Yeah. What do you think the first mind they were talking about? Right. Yeah. Do you think that was God's spirit telling you don't do it? Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't do it. Don't go this way. Amen. Or don't yeah. say this. So yeah, I should have said that. Yeah. I thought about it, but I went on and did it anyway. Yeah. Amen. Uh, All right. Then. And so David said, and he what? He watched the baby as he got sicker and sicker, and he eventually died. Yeah. God, mercy, and forgiveness would come with uh, Solomon's birth. So what? He, he acknowledged David's forgiveness. A repentance, and then what? Then he actually blessed him with what? With Solomon, hmm. right? Amen. All right. 
uh, the Lord did not give up on David or his enduring dynasty. Uh, because why? Because David knew, admitted he had done wrong, and he asked forgiveness and what, and he began to what to be more right and to do the thing that God wanted him to do. All right. In the conclusion, let David's story warn us against such attitude. Our sins have consequences in others' lives, and sins we ignore instead of confess harden our hearts to other sins. Mm -hmm. yes. Sins mm -hmm. we ignore instead of confessing is when we know we've done wrong, but we don't act, never ask God to forgive us. So what that yeah. do? That open the door and opportunity for you to say, "Well, I can do something else," and God what? God ain't gonna do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> to abuse our own influence must constantly be held in check. We yeah. must be willing not only to hold others to account, but also to listen when Christian brothers and sisters do the same for us. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Don't always be willing and ready to tell somebody else about their wrongness or their sins. Yeah. But somebody tell you about your wrongness, your sins, what? Listen to them. <laughs> yeah. God is working both ways, right? Yeah. Amen. Um, the words of Christ first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and yeah. then shall thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Yeah. Amen. Self evaluation first. And then, yeah. all to remember, confess your sins and turn to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. What, yeah. what does it say? If my people call by my name, we talking about Christians, right? Amen. Yeah. To humble themselves and pray. Yeah. Yeah. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Mm -hmm. All that that what we have to do. Huh? And then they say, yeah. What well, then will I hear? <laughs> Amen. I'll hear from heaven. Amen. I'll forgive their sin. Then I'll heal their land. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. One more lesson. Thank you. Pray something has been said or done that would help all of us to be yeah. more yeah. mindful of the things we do yeah. mm. that are not pleasing in God's life and the yeah. consequences that it may cause or bring upon somebody else. Amen. Yeah. Right, Sister John. Thank you, Reverend. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you, Reverend, for the message today. Wonderful message. Something that yeah. gives us a self-examination. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Amen. Any other questions or comments before we close out? Yeah, well, it just shows that David was a child of God, and that's the distinction <laughs> between a, somebody that's a believer as opposed to somebody that's not. All a, right. A true believer re truly repents. And, uh, and and that's what that's what that also shows, and not like the man and uh, I think it's in Ephesians when they came and told him he was living with his father's wife, mm -hmm. and they he excommunicated. Well, that, evidently that's the difference. He he didn't repent, but David did. So that's the difference. And in Romans chapter seven talks all about that. And good morning to everybody. Amen. Good morning to you as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother. Good speed. All my let us all stand. <clears throat> I just got that too. Yes, he did. Reverend Harrison. Uh huh. Up there at A Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just got a look too. All righty, let us, Reverend, would you offer a word of prayer?
God was thanking God for his determination and his desire to work until his day was done. God, you have seen fit now, Lord, to call them from labor to rest. The Father, we pray now for his family, that they may be comforted. There, the Lord, we pray for his church family, and God, that they will be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Now that they leave it as passed out, that they still may continue to go forward and to serve you with all their hearts, souls, and minds. Live according to the teaching and the guidance that we have given unto them, to stand from you, work it through you, and God. Yeah. The way that you wanted him to go, that he may lead the people in the righteous way. So, Father, we pray now for comfort for the family, for strength as they go through this time of bereavement and time of loss. This is our prayer to point each yeah. person to Amen. 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 If all minds are clear, let us repeat the mystery. May the Lord watch between me and thee when we're absent one from another. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Good to see you. All right. Mm -hmm. Have a good